Hey everyone, Kevin from MechanicalAdvantage.com. In the previous two videos, I showed the setup of the CAD on the part that you see on the screen. Then I did the tool pathing, and now I'm ready to go out to the garage and run this part on the Sile X7. However, before I do that, I have to post out the code, which I didn't do in the previous video, so that's where I wanna start. I'm gonna post one program for the front and rear soft jaws that'll cut at the same time, and then I'm gonna post a program for the front gauge and the rear gauge. So I'm gonna highlight my front soft jaws and hold down Control or Command to select my rear soft jaws, and then I'm gonna right click, this is one way you can do it, and I'm gonna choose to create an NC program. It's already selected my post, I can give this a number, I'll just call this soft jaws. It's gonna output it to the thumb drive that I'm gonna use. It has my other presets already set, like don't load the tool. Everything else looks okay. I can go to the operations tab and see the two setups in the operations that are gonna be posted. I'll hit post and Fusion is gonna warn me that I have multiple setups selected at the same time because I've got a GVD4 for the front set of JAWS and a GVD5 for the rear set, and that's just fine. So I'll hit OK, and it creates that NC program for me. Now I'm gonna go to my front gauge, and I'll right-click and create an NC program for that, and I'll just call this front gauge. Everything else is good. I could look at the operations if I want. That's what I want. I'll say post. And I'm gonna to go to the rear gauge and right click on that and choose create NC program. Rear gauge. Got those programs done. All the rest of my settings are the same. I could look at my operations one more time. Everything looks good. I'll say post. And now I've created the NC programs. I can also simulate an NC operation if I wanna see how things are gonna work. So if I simulate this, I'll see that my cutter is going, it looks like it's going through the part. Remember, we're cutting the soft jaws. So it's gonna go do that, and then it's gonna do the 2D contour, and then it's gonna hop over, and it's gonna cut the second set of soft jaw cavities. So one program does all of those operations, and you can watch over here, you can see this now on the rear soft jaws and what it's actually doing. So you can visually check your NC programs as well if you're using multiple setups at the same time. So everything looks good. I've already gone through and done a double check on all my simulations. I'm confident in everything. So let's head out to the machine and get set up and run this part. All right, we're gonna start with a 3 inch in-mill sweet flute, running at 10,000 RPM, tooth out per tooth, taking a 15% step over, and going full depth of cut on this one. Now we're gonna jump in the 2D contour, so I'm just gonna do 10,000 RPM, I don't remember the feed per tooth, and then a cleanup finish. Another 2D adaptive, same parameters, 10,000 RPM, two thou per tooth, 15% step over on the cutter. And we're gonna take a few step downs, and then there'll be some contour passes in between the adaptive operations with a finishing pass, just to get things to size where they need to be. That wraps up the soft jaws. Now it's time to take the spacers out, get the part loaded up, and load the new program. Time to do a tool change and put the shear hog in. Really impressed with this tool changer. It hasn't failed me yet. Uh, all the tools, the tool change has been flawless so far. You're gonna hear a little bit, this is gonna sound aggressive. A combination of I took a little bit more material than I wanted there, and the RPMs weren't quite up to speed, and I had to take 10 thou per tooth with a two flute cutter. I'm gonna switch back to my 3 8 inch and start sizing this part. For 2D adaptive, same sort of parameters, 10,000 RPM, two thou per tooth, 15% step over, just gonna start working away at the different diameters and again with the finishing cleanup contour pass over each one of these. 
nice to have the simulation to know that I'm going to have the tool clearance that I need because you're going to see the holder gets a little close, but plenty of room down there. Just gonna come in here, move the machine table forward, check to see if I have any big burrs and how the surface finish feels on this part. That's a critical test right there. And now I'll, un I'll loosen up the vise and take the part out. Come back and stick it in the second position, tighten it down. Now first I need to get my spacer put back in the front station before I tighten it down. I'm not putting another piece of stock in there, so I'm gonna tighten this down, give it a good pull. I'm not really sure why I pulled, why I tightened this so much. And then I'll come in with the hammer and just make sure it's seated down where it needs to be in the bottom of the pocket. So you'll see me grab that, smack that a couple times, put it in there. Now I'm ready to give it one more good tighten. I'm not sure why I felt like I needed to have it so tight this time around. That'll be okay. And we're ready to go and load the next program and start cutting the second side. You'll see we start off with the tool change going back to the shear hog. And this time I'm not taking the same exact parameters, but I'm not taking quite so much material off. And it sounds a lot less aggressive. Sorry about the splashing as I got the camera closer to give you guys a better view. Of course, we're going to have more splashes on the camera. Probably work on making an air knife or something like that to try to keep the splashes off. Switch back to the 3 8 inch cutter here. And I'm going to just start adaptiving and 2D contouring the different diameters on the way down until I get all these different sections to size. Now keep in mind you're going to see the tool pull up every time between the 2D adaptive and the 2D contour and on the very last one I only do a 2D contour and you don't see it pull up so often. Again, sorry about the splashes on the camera lens. It's something I'll definitely work on, and I have the coolant turned way down in fact here. So that wraps up the second side of the part. Parts all finished up. All right, so here is the final part. Uh, super happy with the finishes. Uh, the sizes are all spot on, less than a thousandth of an inch off. I'll take some screenshots and post them at the end of the video. I don't have enough hands to hold this thing and take the videos that I need. So, um, super happy with this part. It came out right the first time. Everything is within spec, and I think the customer is going to be happy with the results. So, hope you guys liked watching this video series from CAD to CAM to machine. Uh, I thought it was kind of fun for me to make the whole process, and on to the next video. If you have any questions, Make sure you leave them below down in the comments, and as always, thanks for watching. I just wanted to hop in really quick and talk about the measurements that I took. So this dimension is supposed to be 1.000 inches, so I'm within a half tenth on that, really happy. This one is supposed to be 
five zero so that's really close right there where it needs to be this dimension was supposed to be 0.55 so again within a half tenth according to the calipers anyway and then the final dimension was supposed to be 0 0.50 so within a thousandth of an inch all the dimensions on this part came out really great so super happy with that